Hi, this is Sarit Schwetzer, and welcome to the It Is Taught podcast, a podcast devoted to the teachings of Rabbi Schneir Zalman of Liadi, as recorded in his most famous work, the Tanya. My hope for this show is to make these teachings accessible and relatable to the average person, regardless of prior Jewish education or affiliation. The episodes follow the prescribed daily study portions and are meant to serve as practical lessons in how to live your life as your true self and develop an authentic and powerful relationship with your Creator. I have personally experienced the effects the study of this work has had on me, and I'm excited to share what I can of this knowledge with you. So please join me on this journey of learning, self-growth, and connection with your Source. Hi, and welcome to the It Is Top podcast, episode 53 for the 12th of Shvat in a leap year. And today we are continuing with chapter 20. And if you remember from last time, and if you don't, go back and please listen to the episode we we uh, gave yesterday, where we just we were started talking about God, and we started talking about the consistency of God and the constant nature of God, and how God was unchanging before creation and unchanging after creation, and how this is something that is really unique to God, that God doesn't change ever, and also how nothing exists apart from him. And this is something that's really difficult for us as human beings to understand because as we mentioned yesterday, also God is unique in this ability. So by virtue of the fact of God being unique in this ability, it's something that's really difficult for us to relate to in a really true and real sense. Because as we mentioned, you know, if a person creates something, let's say if a person writes a poem or uh, starts a business or writes a book or something like that, that process is going to change them in some way. That Anytime we create something, we get changed by that creation. That thing that we made changes us in some sort of way. And not only that, anything that we create takes on an existence of its own. And this is not true with God. This is not the same thing with God. When God created the world and God constantly creates the world, the world does not have an existence apart from God. So this is a very tricky thing for us to understand. So what the altar is going to do here today is he's going to try to help us understand this by explaining, by, by having us look at our power of speech. And he says that this can give us a little bit that when we think about our power of speech and the way that we speak, this can give us a little, little glimpse into what we're talking about here when we talk about. And so the altar of us starts off here actually talking about God's speech, because interestingly enough, God actually created the world through speech. So we know, you know, God brought the world. If you look at the story of creation, it talks about, it doesn't say God created this and created that or whatever. It says, God said, let there be light. You know, God said, let there be a firmament in the heavens. So all of creation happens through God's speech. And so this is going to actually help us in understanding our own speech and give us a little bit of a glimpse into how this works. And so in the altar of his words of the Tanya, he says that the existence of all of the worlds, whether they are the supernal worlds or the lower worlds, from nothing to something and their entire vitality and existence so they, that they should exist, you know, that the fact that we are all here and we exist and we don't go back to being not in nothingness. What is this? What is the power that gives us this existence, this ability for us to exist? This is but the speech of God and the, and the spirit of his mouth, his holy mouth, which is vested within them. So basically our entire existence is, if we wanted to really, really break it down, what the altar was saying is is really just the speech of God. That is the reality that underlies all of our existence. And he says that we can understand this with a parable. So because we know that God created man in his image. So he created us in such a way that we can kind of look inside of ourselves and understand God in a certain way. And again, you know, it's not exactly the same. So man is not God, but we do have like serve as sort of like a mirror image for God. And I believe I talked about this before, but I'm going to mention it again now. The idea of anthropomorphisms that are brought up in comes up a lot in Torah. You know, we hear about God's hand, God's wrath, God being proud, God being angry, you know, all kinds of different emotions and attributes of God. And 
we often, often the common way that it's explained is we ascribe human attributes to God, you know, to give us more of something that we can relate to because we have these attributes. So, okay, so we want to relate to God. So we think of God in these kind of like human ways, but in a more Kabbalistic, deeper way, and this is where these parables come in, is it actually becomes reversed. And we actually start to realize that God is actually the ultimate of all of these things. So when we talk about whether it's God's hand, God's speech, God's thought, whatever it is, we can think of these things as being like the ultimate hands, the ultimate thought, the ultimate speech. And what we have as a manifestation in our own bodies is but a mere duplicate replica of that, like an imperfect kind of replica. Uh, so this is talked about a lot in Chassidus elsewhere, but just, you know, I wanted to kind of bring it in mind here because it does come up. So the way it comes up here with in today's Tanya is so, okay, so we talked about God's speech and that how everything in the world, if we break it down to its utmost reality of what it truly is, is really just God's speech. And so he says, we can see this with a parable with a person that when a person speaks something, this speech itself has actually no real existence other than the speaker, than the soul of the speaker of the person of the one who's speaking these things and it's thought of as sort of like an intermediate garment for this soul which is the power of speech so that he can say all kinds of different things so right now you know i'm speaking right so these words that i'm speaking they're not really me they're just like a vehicle they're just like a garment that i am using that my soul is using in order to express itself to you but the speech itself is not really me the speech is fleeting you know it's gone in a second and it's not you can't hold on to it and say that's to read you know that that's her that's her in the speech the speech is just this garment that i use and the speech itself also is it has no existence other than me the entire speaking that i'm talking right now you know it's it's it, it it cannot exist apart from me it's not it doesn't have an independent existence of its own and so all the more so when we talk about speech that's true so then that's so then when we go into the more internal kind of garment which is the internal garment of speech which is actually thought where these speech came from so how does a person talk is first that you think of something and you think of what you're going to say and then it manifests in a type of speech so this thought is the vitality of the speech so when we compare speech to the thought that the speech came from the speech is nothing in comparison to the thought because really the speech could not exist other than the thought. The speech is just like a result that comes from the thought. And then if we even go further than that, then what is the more internal part of even the thought? This is actually the essence of the soul, which are the 10 aspects of the soul that we talked about before. You know, we have the three intellectual attributes of the soul and then the seven emotive attributes of the soul. So the, so from these attributes of the soul, this is where the letters of thought came down that then eventually translate into speech when a person actually speeches speaks because you know usually we think of of letters of being letters of speech but there are also letters of thought even though they're a little bit more spiritual and they're a little bit more refined and delicate but these they still do exist so just to give a little recap today we reached the end of the portion uh, so we want to understand trying to really uh, wrap our brains around this idea of everything in the world and the existence of everything, not only in our world, but actually in fact in all the worlds, its whole soul existence is nothing other than God. And that God is the, everything is dependent upon God for its entire existence and vitality. And also how God does not change from before creation, after creation is exactly the same. And so getting into this deeper today, we explored how well, okay, well, what is reality? How did God actually create the world? God created world through speech. We know that he spoke reality into existence. And so the altar says that one way that we can begin to try to understand that is actually by looking at human speech, by our own speech, and by understanding that and, and noticing that when we speak and we say things, the speech doesn't actually have an independent existence other than ourselves. It's 100% dependent on the speaker and the one that's speaking. And if we want to really break it down in a more technical way, where does the speech come from? The speech comes from thought. So we only speak things that we think about. We can't, a person can't say things unless there was an initial thought that led them to say whatever it was that they were going to say. And even the thought too, you know, even though thought might seem like, okay, wow, so that's like really the source of the speech. The thought too 
has a source as well. And the thought comes from the inner workings of the soul, from the 10 aspects of the soul. So ultimately, the speech, which comes from the thought, is ultimately, both of them are totally and 100% dependent upon the soul of the speaker. So they don't have independent existence of them, their own. They really are you know, just totally 100% dependent upon the soul of the speaker. And they receive their entire existence and vitality from the speaker. So we will continue with these ideas and hopefully get a little bit deeper in trying to understand this in future episodes and stay tuned and I will speak with you tomorrow. Thanks for listening to the It Is Top podcast hosted by Sarit Switzer. This podcast is dedicated in loving memory of my maternal grandfather, Abraham Yitzhak Ben Binyamin Cohen of Blessed Memory. Music by Shoshana. If you enjoyed this episode and would like to support the show, please share it with others and subscribe on YouTube, Apple iTunes, Spotify, or wherever you listen to podcasts. And make sure to leave us a five-star review. To find out more about the It Is Taught project, including more information on my soon-to-be-published book, please visit our website, itistaught.com. To catch the latest from me, follow me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Looking forward to speaking with you tomorrow, and until then, have a great day.